Hi everyone. So today we're going to be learning about the minimum spanning tree. Now, what is a minimum spanning tree? Well, it's a first of all, what is a spanning tree? A spanning tree is a kind of graph which uh, connects to all the vertices just once and it does not form a cycle. So each pair of vertices are just connected once and if they're connected once, so definitely they will never form a cycle. And a minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree where you just take the lowest edges and form the minimum costed, minimum weighted uh, tree, minimum weighted spanning tree. So that's what's called a minimum spanning tree. That is, we always look for the minimum weighted edges and not the maximum weighted edges. So that means a maximum spanning tree is obviously going to be with the maximum weighted edges. So um, the graphs can, the graphs have to be undirected and connected graph. And uh, there will be weight function. These are the weights that will, uh, th that will just, uh, like, these are the weight that will just determine the cost or length. And, uh, well, there are two kinds of spanning tree algorithms. Uh, first of all, there, we're going to be learning about Prim's algorithm. Uh, Prim's algorithm is fairly an easy algorithm, and we're going to be doing the walkthrough of Prim's algorithm today. Um, so let's get started. So Prim's algorithm is similar to Dijkstra's algorithm, except that it records edge weights and not path lengths. So let's see the walkthrough, first of all. Um, Prim's algorithm firstly starts with any vertex. You, it, in this case, you can take any vertex, like take A or B or C. So we take D in this example, uh, and then we always take the minimum edge, uh, minimum weighted vertex. Now, look at uh, we, what you will notice in the walkthrough is that whenever we select one edge, whenever we select one whole edge, suppose from D to D to E, there's one, D to F, there's one, and D to C, there's one, and D to C is obviously the minimum. We are going to be going, like, it's going to form a set. D to C will form a set, and from D, and from and from there, we'll go to the other edges, we'll go to the other vertex, vertices from C or from D. And then if C, D, C, and F forms a set, then we're going to be going from D, C, F, from just, from F or D or C. So I guess you'll understand it after I start doing the walkthrough. So first we go from D to C. Okay. So first we select D. We record, look at the table. We record the uh, edges. We record the weights and the predecessor and the edges. So first we go from D to, uh, D to G, which is obviously the minimum. I didn't notice that before. Okay, so D to G. And then from, from here, from this red part, we can go from from G to H or we can go from D to C, but whichever path you want to prefer, I'll go from D to C. Okay, so from D to C, now you can go from this whole red part, you can go anywhere. You can go from D to F, you can go from G to H, or you can go from C to F. It's your wish. Well, I'm still going on this side, so I'll just go from C to F. Okay, so after going from C to F, we can again go from G to H or maybe from D to F, or maybe from um, C to B, or maybe from F to E. Since F to E is the lowest till now, so we'll go from F to E. So this part, this whole set is selected. Now from there, we'll, from this whole set, now we're gonna, go going, we're gonna be going to the other edges. So from D to, uh, sorry, so from, now notice that we cannot go from D to F, because if we go from D to F, it's already connected once with once with this whole set. If we go from D to F, it will form a cycle. F C D F C D. It will form a cycle. So this is the function. This is the whole uh, criteria of a spanning tree. You cannot form a cycle, and each vertex has to be connected once with another vertex. So now again, continuing from here, we'll just go from maybe G to H, and then after that, we're going to be going from H to A. And then B, uh, now the, just the only vertex that's left is B. Now notice there's so many paths from that, that, can, come for, uh, that can come to B. Uh, we'll select the minimum of all these paths, which is obviously C to B. So yeah, this is the whole completed spanning tree. Now look at this without all these markings. Look, every vertex is just connected once. E to F is connected once. C to B is connected once. Every pair, sorry, every pair is just connected once. C to B is connected once and C to F is connected once, and C to D is connected once. 
and and then we come from we come from a path from F to B because that will form a cycle. We come from a path from B to E because that will form a cycle because E is already in this whole red colored set. So we don't need to connect it again. We E is already connected in this set in in such a way that we don't need to connect it again anymore. Anyway, so this is actually a form of greedy approach. Like the algorithm just finds the shortest path somehow. It does not have to connect to all the paths. Like like in case of Dijkstra and Bellman Ford, it goes to all the pairs, all the edges, checks whichever is the shortest. But here it doesn't check all the edges. It just checks the minimum ones and then greedily just goes to all the minimum weighted edges and then connects the graph in that way. So all the whole graph is not connected here. Just a part, just a few parts of it is connected, which definitely makes this, which which makes it a greedy algorithm. So yeah, that's about the uh, Prim's algorithm. And well, Prim's algorithm, first of all, can be uh, implemented with uh, many in many ways. If you implement it with adjacency list, then the complexity will be order of v square as usual. And uh, if you you can implement it with Fibonacci heap or uh, uh, binary heap and all that. Uh, so yeah, uh, the minimum distance now we just add the minimum distance which is uh, 21. See the cost of minimum spanning tree is uh, 21 after adding all these edges 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. All of these costs uh, 21. So uh, this is how you would do the simulation uh, writing the edges like this and then writing the predecessor and the vertex. So I hope you understood today's tutorial and next time we're going to be doing Kruskal's algorithms, simulation and uh, complexity analysis. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up and uh, good luck.